Hello, my name is Lewis and this project is about the future of optics, liquid lenses. The reason I came up with this project is because I love photography and videography and it came to me that today's lenses are too big, too heavy and too expensive, with lens technologies used more and more today. From phone cameras, CCTV cameras, drones, sensors for next generation self-driving cars and etc. More simpler, smaller and more efficient lenses are required today. Conventional lenses I mentioned earlier are big and heavy due to the plethora of glass elements inside the lens, and a new method of building lenses is necessary today. So where are we today? The two main new lens designs are metal lenses and liquid lenses. Both are way more efficient than conventional lenses. But because nature has chosen to use the structure of liquid crystalline lenses, I decided to study how a liquid lens works and make a simple prototype. Now moving on to the research, Talking more about what nature has chosen for us, crystalline lenses. Crystalline lenses change shape to accommodate near or far targets. The lens in our eyes is made up of 60% protein. The tissue is transparent, which allows light to easily enter the eye. It's also very flexible, so it can change shape and bend the light to focus properly on the retina. Liquid lenses scientists and experts create today mimic this function, and instead of focusing light rays onto the retina, they focus light rays onto the camera sensor instead. The next section is about the physics behind lens technologies or optics. So refraction is basically that the speed of light changes when it passes through different substances. For example, in the photo on the left, the light is bent because the speed of light is slowed down when it is going through the trunk of plastic. And refractive index is the numerical value of the light bending ability of a substance. One is the refractive index of a vacuum where there is nothing, and the lower the refractive index, the lower density the medium is, and the higher the refractive index, the medium is higher density. The next equation to know is Snell's Law. Snell's Law is a formula used to describe the relationship between the angles of incident and refraction. The angle of incident is the angle formed between the perpendicular line of the surface and the light ray going in. The angle of refraction is the angle formed between the same perpendicular line and the light ray that's going away from the surface. With this formula, we can get either one of the angles or the refraction index of the medium. Personally, in this project, I used this formula to get the refraction index of the lens I created. Now moving on to the first sketch. Here you can see the whole lens barrel which is made up of cardboard. Inside it are the lens, the pressing mechanism and other structures that help make the overall structure more robust. The pressing mechanism above consists of a motor and a gear wheel and the stick with gears. This enables the stick to move up and down as the motor and the wheel rotates. The lens is made up of OHO, a completely environmentally friendly material made up of seaweeds and calcium lactate. It is transparent and it forms a spear-like shape. The principle behind the formation of OHO is that sodium alginate and calcium chloride react, and the sodium and calcium substitute for each other to form calcium alginate. Before sodium and calcium are substituted, sodium alginate is a soft polymernet, but after they are substituted, calcium alginate becomes a gel-like form because of the flexibility of the polymernet is reduced. Sodium alginate is soluble in water, but calcium alginate is not. So a gel-like film is formed on the outside in contact with the calcium lactate solution, and liquid could be stored inside. Below the lens is a structure that keeps the lens in place when the lens is getting pressed. This structure prevents the lens from getting pressed too much, and the lens from falling off the entire platform using pieces of wood. So what are the limitations of this initial design? Because liquid lens technology requires so much cutting edge technology to build it perfectly, as a normal high school student, it is almost impossible to create a perfectly clear and well focusing lens. As this technology isn't commercialized yet, even experts in this field couldn't create a well working liquid lens that outperforms contemporary lenses yet. The lens on the top left is a prototype of an electric liquid lens. This lens is a different type of liquid lens than what I created. The liquid lens I created is for changing focus, and the lens on the right changes focal length of the lens. This liquid lens is also tuned electrically when the lens I created changes shape mechanically. A focal length on a lens is how far the lens can see, and we call lenses that can change focal lenses zoom lenses. As the photo on the right shows, the focal length is changed by the size of the image being produced at the end of the lens. This changes the magnification of the final image that hits the camera sensor. The first image, featuring a zoom lens, is made out of liquid lens technology. As the liquid shape inside the lens changes from concave to convex, the focal length of the lens changes, especially compared to the second photo with a traditional lens. 
You can clearly see that the liquid lens is more efficient because it takes up much less space. Moving on to the next section, testing. The first thing I needed to fix from the initial design after some testing was trying to solve the hardening issue of the Oho. The problem with this lens was that after a while, whether you put it in calcium lactate solution or just water, the inside would harden and the Oho would turn opaque. If the lens was kept this way, the light wouldn't be able to pass the lens correctly, and even if light passed, the focal point wouldn't be strong enough to be seen because so few light rays passed. The first method I used to try to fix this problem was taking out the sodium alkanate from inside the Oho. I used a syringe to take the sodium alkanate out and put the water instead. The problem with this method was that the syringe made a small hole that would make the water leak out of the Oho. To mitigate this, I tried to add calcium lactate over sodium alkanate to create a new membrane over the hole, but this didn't work. The next method then had to be to change the material of the lens. This new lens is made out of sodium polyacrylate, an odorless grainy white powder. Its most impressive property is its ability to absorb large amounts of fluid, up to 800 times its volume of distilled water and lesser amounts of other liquid mixtures. The problems listed above about the Oho lens aren't present for this lens as if it stays moist, it will stay the same. Because the liquid lens is going to be in a lens barrel, which is a confined space, it is possible to make the moisture of the lens not escape out of the lens. Other than the lens, there were additional changes made to the pressing mechanism and the barrel of the lens. Because the motor speed couldn't be controlled, I had to come up with a new way to control the motor speed to the speed I wanted it to be. The method I used to slow down the speed of the motor is by increasing tension using a rubber band. With the rubber band, the speed of the motor decreased dramatically, giving me more control over the speed of the motor. The ceiling of the barrel also had to be reinforced because the gear would be simply out of place and not functioning because the ceiling bent after time. To reinforce the ceiling, screws were added to increase stability, and an additional piece of cardboard was added to the ceiling to make it more robust, and the table was added to make sure all the new additions stayed in place. Now, testing the finished lens to see if the focal length changes when the liquid lens changes shape. It is important to get the refractive index of the newly created lens. This is a numerical value of the light bending ability of a substance, and this value is crucial for calculating the focal point of a lens. First of all, we can get the refractive index of the lens using Snell's law. Snell's law states that the ratio of the sine of the angle of incidence to the sine of the angle of refraction is constant for the pair of the given media, and to get the values we need, we simply have to shoot the beam of light through the lens, draw a perpendicular line to the tangent line, and measure the angle. We also know the refractive index of air, so we have 3 of the 4 values. This means that if we plug in the values we know, we can get the 4th value. We know from the image that the incident angle is approximately 70.5 degrees, the refracted angle is approximately 53 degrees, and the incident index is 1.0003 because the first medium is air, and its refractive incident is 1.0003. After we plug in these values, we're able to know the refractive index of the lens, which is 1.18. With the refractive index of the lens, we are now able to calculate where the focal point will be using the curved surface refraction formula. The formula states that the refractive index of the lens divided by the lens's distance from the focal point subtracted by the refractive index of the air divided by the object's distance from the lens equals the refractive index of the lens subtracted by the refractive index of the air divided by the radius of the lens. And if we say that the object is 30 centimeters away from the lens and we get the radius of the unpressed lens, we get the lens's distance from the focal point, which is 25.3 cm away from the lens. 25.3 cm isn't the real focal point though. As shown in the image above, when the light comes out of the lens, the medium changes again and light refracts again. Thus, the distance we got isn't the real distance to the focal point. This time, the outside medium is going to be the refractive medium, meaning that the refractive angle is going to be formed in the outside medium which is air. Plugging in the values like the previous equation gives us 1.0003 divided by the lens's distance from the focal point subtracted by 1.1a divided by 25.3 subtracted by 4.5 equals 1.0003 subtracted by 1.18 divided by negative 2.25. If we calculate this equation, we get 7 centimeters. This means that when the object is 30 centimeters away from the lens, the light rays are going to meet 7 centimeters behind the lens. The same can be done when the lens is pressed, and because the substance didn't change, the refractive index is still 1.18. It is also proven by the image shown. To calculate where an object needs to be, to be in focus when the camera is kept still. We have to repeat the process before, and we get that when the camera is 7cm behind the lens, an object has to be 51.4cm away from the lens to be in focus. This is shown in this video, and as the lens gets pressed, the image closer to the lens becomes more blurry than when the lens isn't pressed. 
This is because as the lens gets pressed, we figure out that the focal point becomes farther away from the lens, and if the focal point gets shorter, things behind the focal plane are going to become blurrier. In conclusion, what was proved by this project? We proved that as the lens gets pressed, the focus of the lens changes. When we compare the two photos, although the difference is difficult to see, we are able to see that the closer object is more clear when the lens isn't pressed, and the object behind is clearer when the lens is pressed. After numerous trial and errors, I've also made an ideal liquid lens design that solves the problems that the lens I've created had. The first major problem was that the spherical aberration of this lens is very severe. Spherical aberration is when the outer parts of a lens do not bring light rays into the same focus as the central part. This results in an unclear focus point that makes the image blurry. This is the main reason why the image that came out was blurry and not clear. To fix this, I came up with the conclusion that increasing the size of the lens, changing the shape of the lens, and adding additional lenses will help fix the problem of spherical aberration present in the lens I've created. Changing the shape to a thinner convex oval shape will help decrease the difference of the light rays between the outer part and the central part. Increasing the size of the lens will help make more of the center part and the less of the center part of the light rays hit the sensor. And adding additional lenses will help gather the light rays into a point so that the light doesn't go through the outer part of the lens. The second major problem is that the image jerks after pressing the lens and letting go of the lens. This is because as the lens gets pressed, the camera sensor and the liquid lens sensor don't align. It also has to do with the fact that the lens isn't stable enough. To fix this problem, the new ideal model of the liquid lens I created uses a new pulling mechanism that lets the lens's center stay in place with the camera sensor. This model also lets small adjustments to the shape possible to focus on an object at any distance. So this would be the ideal liquid lens model made using the information and knowledge gathered from making an actual prototype of a liquid lens. Thank you for listening to my presentation.